Qualcomm just announced they're acquiring Arduino, the company that makes boards like these, hardware that introduced a whole generation of tinkers to microcontrollers and embedded electronics. These two Uno boards were the first microcontrollers I bought. Over a decade ago, I blinked my first LED with an Uno. The code for that is actually still up on my GitHub. The latest version of the Uno, until today's new Uno Q, which I'll get to in a bit, is this $30 Uno R4 that I just picked up from Micro Center. I came from the software side of things, and like many others, the Arduino was my gateway into the world of tiny computer-controlled electronics. For me, using the Raspberry Pi for that stuff didn't come until later. But sure, nowadays there's the Raspberry Pi Pico and Espresso's ESP boards, and I use dozens of those. But Arduino holds a special place in the maker and electronics tinkering communities. They took chips like the Atmel and the STM32, and they built software and guides to help people program them without having to spend years learning how microcontrollers work and use expensive dev boards. All that to say, someone buying Arduino is big news, and it's gonna make some waves. Especially since the company buying them is one of the biggest tech companies on the planet, Qualcomm. But why would Qualcomm want Arduino? This is speculation on my part, but for Qualcomm, I think this is partly about making their dev kits and IoT stuff more approachable to students, tinkers, and hackers who might be the ones making purchasing decisions in the next decade. On a more immediate level, companies are mixing solutions like an Arduino or ESP32 for controls and a little Linux computer to run AI vision models, so why not put them together on the same board? I don't know how much I trust Qualcomm to be great stewards of the Arduino brand and community, and I'm sure there are going to be some people who just jump ship to other solutions. And on Arduino's side, I know there's been some pretty crazy stuff in the past, like the dispute where one of the founders trademarked the name in Italy but wasn't affiliated with the main group that trademarked it in the rest of the world. They spent years sorting that out until they got it settled in 2017. After that, though, Arduino expanded their hardware from basic tinkering boards like the Uno to full-on industrial hardware in their Pro line. So I'm guessing having direct access to add on more powerful Qualcomm chips as coprocessors helps that business a lot. And kicking things off today, the first thing they're releasing together is the Uno Q. It'll start at 44 bucks for a board with 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of eMMC storage. It's basically an ARM SBC and an UNO form factor. But unlike the Pi, the architecture is more like what Radsa did with their X4. Qualcomm's Dragonwing QRB2210 runs Linux, but flip the board over and there's an Arduino microcontroller just under the storage chip. They're betting on people building smart devices and robots and stuff with it. Will it pay off? I don't know. I mean, the nice thing is it keeps the classic UNO form factor, and it looks like it'll have enough grunt to match like Pi 3 levels of performance, but maybe with faster Wi-Fi and I.O. But I have two big questions. One, how well will Qualcomm support Linux on here? They're going to ship it with Debian installed, but will they devote the same amount of effort to keeping it up to date as like Raspberry Pi, or will they abandon it in a couple years? I don't know. But second, will they make it easier to develop things that fully utilize the little microcontroller on board? In other words, what makes this solution different than like plugging an Uno into a regular SBC? Well, for that, they're also announcing Arduino App Lab, and you can either run it on the Uno Q or on another computer, and I think the idea is to make it easier to build mixed Linux plus microcontroller apps. Right now, it can be a little messy if you're like developing a Python Vision app on the Pi that also works with MicroPython to control motors with a Pi Pico, and the same thing if you're building something for the Radza X4. Except, on the Raspberry Pi, you could skip the microcontroller and just use the built-in GPIO with Python directly. You won't get the same real-time processing you get with a separate microcontroller, but that's not always required. One other part of the Arduino ecosystem that attracted me and many others is the open-source nature of their products. How many other companies have thousands of cheaper clone boards made and they're kinda okay with it? Like, I even have this Polinduino that was playfully using the same style board as the Uno, but has a Pi chip at its heart. Supposedly, the board schematics will be open source, and they have these new high-speed connectors on the bottom for like HDMI, Ethernet, and stuff. But can someone design their own version of the Uno Q and get a Dragonwing chip to install on it? Well, not the same as like the STM chip that powers the Arduino side. Like on DigiKey, you can find a bunch of versions of the microcontroller depending on what you want to build. But the Dragonwing? I'm guessing you have to order a lot and have a business relationship with Qualcomm to get your hands on that chip. It's not that Raspberry Pi or Rockchip are any different there, but one would hope that Arduino's openness could infect Qualcomm's chip business a little. I mean, I can dream, right? But the Uno Q is just their first product, and I don't even have one to test yet. 
Besides overall performance and efficiency, the biggest question I have, and this is assuming all the regulatory hurdles are cleared, but the biggest question for me is, will they still target the educational and maker markets, or are we going to see a bigger push into the more lucrative industrial space? The price of the Uno has only gone up over the years, and with the Uno Q, we're hitting the same price point as like a low-end Raspberry Pi 5, but with performance that's a couple years behind. To fund the lower margin educational stuff, you do need to have more profit margins on high-end parts, so I'm not against the more pro stuff. But all these companies have to find the balance between catering to students and makers and catering to enterprise. It's not always an easy balance. But for myself, I'm not as deep into microcontrollers and embedded electronics as probably many of you watching are, so please let me know your thoughts below. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling.